Welcome to the Danny Knee Coaches Show, and we're in the Nebraska Ready Room, the place where Coach does his X's and O's, his teaching area, and we're going to talk about some X's and O's, the great play at the end of the Missouri game, but first, let's talk about the Iowa State game, and we'll show some highlights. Well, Dan, the Iowa State game, the... You I think the key to the game was the start. Right at the start, Nebraska had many opportunities where we just missed some easy shots, where we just didn't take care of the basketball. We made some mistakes driving to the lane where Dorfelt, a good big defensive player on Iowa State, took some charges. And then those first couple of minutes, you fall behind, and all of a sudden, 13, 14 possessions, and you're down 25 to 3. There's just no way. We have to be more productive with the ball. And we just didn't take care of it. We didn't execute. We, we just weren't ready to play. And, and it's really tough, but that charge really bothered us. Mm -hmm. We well, talk about not being ready to play, and I know that's a term that's used a lot in basketball. I know you really can't describe it. When you went over there, you thought the team was going to be ready. You thought they were going to win. But as you said, the kids just weren't ready for it. Well, what happens, Dan, is you go out the gate and you have certain opportunities at the beginning of each half and certain opportunities during the game. And the opportunities we had, they left the door open. They didn't score a lot of points the first three, four, five minutes. So if we get on the board, get some points, the crowd's taken out of the game, our kids get in a rhythm, very positive, and then they start executing and they're playing the game, all the nervousness is gone. What happened, though, is we dug ourselves a grave quick by not executing, by not carrying out our game plan, and that's when we say we're not ready. That We didn't do the things, and we're capable of doing these things. All our players are capable of playing better than we played. We didn't play to our potential. We didn't use our talent. We didn't seize the moment, and that's disappointing. Well, uh, Derek Vick went out uh, on fouls, and five fouls, early in the second half, and the play he went out on was a charging foul, an offensive foul. Now, I have said several times live on the air to when we're doing live ball games that I think the officials are calling that differently this year. Do you think they are? Well, they were calling it different over. <laughs> I mean, I, it, there was, you know, you just couldn't tell. We were jumping in front, and it was a block. They were jumping in front, and it was a charge. But there's a principle of verticality, Dan, where the offensive player has to go up. He has his ground, and he has to go up straight. If he leans into the defensive player, it's called a charge. The normal charge was the defensive player is positioned, he's standing still, the offensive player then initiates the contact. If the defensive player is there first and still, you know, then it's a charge. Player control and it goes the other way. But, boy, it's probably the toughest call in basketball to make. And, obviously, you know, Iowa State did a great job with it. And our kids, and then we call it driving lanes, passing lanes, where one of our players takes the ball hard to the basket, and if there's a driving lane, a direct route to the basket, he takes it. But if they close it down, then there's a passing lane. And our, young, our men on, in the game on Wednesday night just didn't do a good job of reading driving lanes and passing lanes. And you have to give credit to Iowa State. But there were some tough calls. Well, we're talking to high school players now. If there was one rule that you had to set up for players, what would it be? Go ahead and take the shot and find out how they're going to call it? Don't leave your feet unless you're positively sure you're going to shoot the basketball. Some bar players get up in the air and then they don't know if they want to shoot it or want to pass it. I have, to, I have to say one thing positive to teach young players how to play this game is stay on the ground and when you leave, shoot the basketball. Don't go in the air and then decide if you're going to shoot a pass. That's probably the toughest thing. A lot of young players just don't do a good job with that. One of the guys that came into your, uh, I mentioned to him in the interview that I, it was like, this year was like picking four or five guys off the street in a street game and saying, you play with this team, you play with that team. And a lot of different guys who came into the team this year. But one of the guys that came to you, Eric Johnson, he knew how to play basketball. Eric Johnson, I, he's a pleasure to coach. He's just a, a great person, and I enjoy being around him. He's very mature. He cares about the team. He has that New York style of play, and if you're not used to that New York style, he has to have the ball in his hand, and he dribbles, and he wants to take everything to the basket, and that's his style. What we're doing with him is not taking his aggressiveness away, using his strength, but trying to teach him how to be a more team offensive player with the passing game and setting picks. He will develop that, and as he develops that, I think he's going to become a more complete player. At the other end of the floor, he's a defensive stopper, Dan. I mean, he guarded 
Derek Chivas the other night and gave, he bothered Derek Chivas. They were both from New York, mm -hmm. little talk going back and forth. But he has the physical skills. Then he gives us a whole dimension defensively this year with the steals, his long arms. He gets his hands on so many balls. It helps to press. As we become better and our big people run more, he's going to be better in the open court. He's going to be better in more press and action. He'd be a great player for Oklahoma. <laughs> well, we're glad he's not down That's there. Right. We're glad he's here. I talked to him. I asked him about he has played basketball almost everywhere. He's played in the street. He's played in New York City. He's played down south. Now he's playing up here. How he liked playing basketball for Danny Nee and at Nebraska. Um, Nebraska's great. You know, the, the sports center is a great place to play. The great atmosphere. The people are into the game. Always screaming and yelling. And I like to play in places that's real loud. And um, as far as Coach Nee, um, he's a great guy. He's a great motivator. Uh, he puts a lot of emphasis on getting the team up and um, making sure that they come out and give a good performance to the crowd. Mm -hmm. Well, talking about crowds and teams that are, uh, are places that are screaming and yelling, in the Missouri ball game, the crowd was alive. That must have been a tremendously enjoyable ball game to play in. Oh, yes, it was. Uh, the crowd was fantastic. And they were real loud. And uh, I think it was a big part. It was a big um, motivator. motivator for us to, to get back in the game after we had got down. 14 points or four minutes left. Uh, I think they really got into the game, really picked us up, and that's why we really we was able to come out and win the game. Mm -hmm. Now you hit a big three-pointer in that, but and, and towards the end of that ball game, and that's usually not the position that you find yourself in is taking the three-point shot. But it looked like it was fluid, just right through, nothing but net. Um, yes, like we work on three-pointers, like on shooting, we have a lot of emphasis on that in practice, but. Uh, it was something that was just needed at that point in time. We were down by like four or five points, and we had to score quick. And um, so I just took the shot. I felt good taken, and I was lucky that it went in. Mm -hmm. Now, you've, you've seen both sides of the Big Eight, I guess, now. In the Missouri game, you see a very up situation. Mm -hmm. And then in Iowa State, it was a situation where a team was able to dominate you. Is that what you thought the Big Eight was going to be like, that tough? Um, yeah, I knew, like, the home games, like, we had a good pretty good chance of beating practically anybody that came in the, in the sports center but on the road I knew it would be tough and that uh, it would be like a, a challenge for us to come out and play good and even possibly win on the road which coach told us a lot but uh, I didn't expect it for us to lose that bad but um, I think it was more of a part of ourselves like preparation uh, coming out and not handling the pressure as well as we, we could have and certain other things but I think we've learned from that and um, like we say a loss is a loss no matter if you lose by 20 or 30 this is still lost, and we're just going to bounce back from that. Eric Johnson brings a lot of experience to the Nebraska basketball team, and he's a top-ten player. 